The carnivore diet, or must I say, the eagle terrorist diet. It is the most worst diet, and the most stupidest diet ever. Infinite. Now, people, first, there is not something else out here. 100% meat eating animal. Even most carnivores eat not 100% meat. For example, the polar bear, one of the most highly carnivore animals, eats 10% plants, berries, for example. So he eats 90% animal body parts. No. He is a hyper carnivore. Just like the lion. Hyper carnivores eat something like from 70 to 70% or more, but nothing more than 90% of their caloric energy from animal corpses. Now, you also have the meso carnivore. Those animals eat anywhere between 14 or 40 percent to 68 percent of their food from and from dead bodies, from animals of uh, the hypo carnivores. But you to the next one. You have also then the omnivores. Omnivores eat from 5 to 20 percent of their caloric intake from animal based sources. But I have also to add something about this. Oh, Above, all those animals don't get heart attacks, blocked arteries, and strokes from eating these animals, and the high amount of cholesterol found in these body parts. Omnivores are animals like the majority of all bears, with some example, uh, with some exceptions. Grishian, Grishian bears uh, eat from 10 to 20 percent of their galleries uh, from animal sources and all others they get from things like uh, fats, roots, uh, berries and that kind of stuff. Um, black bear eats even less uh, animal based foods. Their food exists primarily from of a berries and roots. But sometimes some insects. Now an animal how eats um, insects is not called one carnivore. Those animals are called insectivores. There is insects, not mammals, reptilians, or you can also see my rates of videos about misconceptions about diets. Yeah, and in the comment section below and in the description. As yet. Second, producing dead body parts for animal body parts fetishists is extremely bad for the environment. If you use conservative aesthetics and put it in a, sub in a perspective terms, the average car produced around something like 3 to 12 kilograms CO2 
combo build sides aren't they so clear uh, enough for a forced for B and a move cow flash for just one hamburger produced something like 75 kilograms of carbon dioxide and it, eating one pound of hamburger cost the same amount of damage as driving your car for more than three weeks. Now, furthermore, grass-fed cows produce even more carbon dioxide than green-fed cows. Like this study explained. Because of the ruminants' um, stomachs, stomachs working when on ruminants, I'll uh, eat um, uh, grass. He produced then in that process where he turns grass into energy for more methane in that process. In a short term, an easy understanding. I tried it, explain it, show you guys. Also, keep in mind, grass feeds animals need far more light than green food animals. This is not a brain. It is far more cost effective for the farmer. Also, because you can put lots more animals in small wear has cages that we so euphemistically called factory farms. But, however, in reality, concentration camps. One single cow needs uh, from two to five acres of land. But the average vegan takes only one slash five of an acre of land so you can feed five, um, six people on um, a plant-based vegan diet on one acre it costs no animals to die and therefore it is far more sustainable and that's true the average america in contrary takes three acres of land per year to feed themselves. Around the average America eats around 100, 220 pounds a kilograms of meat per year. But even more extreme is the amount of the average carnivore dieter. For example, a person like ex-doctor Baker. You know the red skin and uh, stupid ex doctor. I'll eat nothing but animal body parts and secretions. I get so vertical. Five hundred seventy five kilograms of animal flesh. Any year. If you wanted, I calculate the amount of greenhouse gas emissions from that. I love to do it. Now, currently, around forty-five. Percent of the Earth's total land mass is used for animal agriculture. In fact, 81% of the total destruction of the Amazon rainforest is because of animal agriculture. That is 70% of cattle ranching 
grazing in other terminologies. Of that is 21% of growing for food for the animals in the agriculture industry. In factory farms. In other words, if the whole world will eat like the kings and queens of the first world, America and the West, or Matrix, or Ankhite Paul, or Matrix, then it will be totally unsustainable, even more than it is today. And it will annihilate most life of the world. It will be an ecological disaster. In fact, 51% of all the greenhouse gas emissions come from the animal air coat system. That is around something like 42.6 billion tons of carbon dioxide in form of CO4 methane. All forms of transportation together in contrary are just 30% of all the greenhouse gas emissions. 30% against 51% of all the greenhouse gas emissions are coming from animal agriculture. Now, last but not least, about ancestors, because you like to talk about that, is it not your magnificent carnivore dietists? Far out, the majority of our ancestors were not hunter-gatherers. Before fire, before cooking, and tools. There was no meat eating. Period. We were gatherers, vegans, long before we turned to the unnatural lifestyle of hunting. The logical and empirical, basic evolutional theory suggests that when the Ice Age started, we are st uh, starting to hunting in a purely survival scenario. After the Ice Age, most turned back to the lifestyle of um, farming vegetables and grains and eating a majority plant-based diet and only the kings and queens the majority of the hunters the royal games they like to call the hunt in that time there are many doctors, scientists who are proof that our physiology is this that we are 100% herbivore for example Dr. William Roberts I wrote an essay on this subject. Um, Dr. Milton, well, Dr. Shelton, um, Dr. Milton, Mill wrote an essay on this subject as well. If you like this video, give this video a thumbs up. I have all the links in the description below, so if you have, have a, a question about anything I have presented you today, please check the links in the description below. And I'll see you next time. When darkness and light become one, the reality is split up and the truth becomes visible.